In science, you have what are called non-complementary paradigms. And to give an example of that, Newtonian physics is a certain way of viewing the world, and it works at a certain level. But if you attempt to apply Newtonian physics to, to quantum mechanics, they, it doesn't work. You have a non-complementary system uh, attempting to address things that are very different and need a different language to describe them and a different theoretical basis to make sense of them. In many ways, the post-industrial, increasingly post-modern uh, Western liberalism is akin to quantum mechanics and the Islamic tradition is more akin to Newtonian physics. And so when the two of us attempt to talk, we're speaking completely different languages. And, and it really creates a massive barrier. Let me give you one example. One of the fundamental premises of the Islamic tradition is that human activity has metaphysical impact. That what we do in the world is actually reflected back to us through the world. So natural disasters are not seen as simply events that happen because of tectonic plate shifts, but there's actually a relationship between human behavior and between what is happening in the world. For many, many Western peoples now, that idea is a quaint, superstitious, historical uh, idea from a, a previous time, something very difficult for Western people to actually relate to. One of the problems with that idea, however, and, and I do put this caveat, is that many Muslims will use that as a way of pointing the finger at people and saying, this is why it's happening. You're an evil person and therefore God is zapping you. That is also a major problem because there's nothing in the Islamic tradition that permits one to do that because it is arrogating to oneself the judgment of God and that's simply not in the realm of, of a human being to do. And that, so that's a very important point. Another aspect that is very difficult for I think Western peoples to relate to is the fact that the primary texts of Islam are 1400 years old and it is very difficult for Western people to understand how you can use a text that was written 1400 years ago to have anything to do with modern legislation. Uh, this seems really quite incomprehensible for many people. And to give you an example, in the United States, we have a 200-year-old document. It's actually older than 200 years, but we have a, uh, a document that is a little older than 200 years called the Constitution. It's the basis of our legal system. In the, in the uh, arguments that we have in the United States of America, we have arguments around what they call strict construction and loose construction, how we interpret the Constitution, originalism versus a living Constitution, the idea of what's called textualism in our tradition, intentionalism. What's the intent of the framers when they said these things? And should we base it on their intent, even though they were speaking 200 years ago in a very different context? Or is it a living constitution that can be reinterpreted based on the changes of time? The Founding Fathers didn't really leave a lot of explanation of how they wanted it to be understood, although there are some remarks. Thomas Jefferson said that you can't expect a, an adult to wear the coat of a child and countries grow, and therefore our understanding will grow, and there needs to be changes. But he also said, but don't allow the Constitution to be wax in the hands of the government to where they can shape it to fit the way they want. This dilemma that exists in the United States is very similar to the dilemma that Muslims are going through today. There are many Muslims that are arguing for a living Quran as opposed to a type of textualist approach or intentionalist approach to the Quran. How do we interpret the Quran in the light of modern society? Now, the reason that I, I really wanted to uh, drive that point home is because the problems of law and language are perennial problems. We still study uh, Plato because Plato raises questions that are still pertinent to people living today. We still study Aristotle because Aristotle also addresses issues that are pertinent to people today.